Uh, my name is Nick. Um, I am joined by Rodrigue and Imaya. Um, and Rodrigue and Imaya are solutions architects at AWS. So um, I think that might actually be one of the most fun jobs at AWS. Like they basically get, get to play with, with new tech all day. But essentially, solutions architects are um, uh, folks that are, are super deep on AWS and get to spend time with customers. Uh, excellent, thank you. Spend time with customers, um, uh, helping them to adopt our services and solutions. Um, <clears throat> as for me, I am the GM for open source observability, and what does that mean? So I lead teams that build Amazon Managed Prometheus, uh, Amazon Managed Grafana, as well as um, our teams that contribute to open telemetry uh, and build ADOT. And does anybody here know what ADOT is? T-shirt for that man, he just, he raised his hand first. Okay, we'll, we'll get you some good, good swag. So ADOT is uh, uh, Amazon distribution of open telemetry. It is our like fully supported um, uh, build and distribution for open telemetry and open telemetry uh, which I'm sure you are all well versed in since you're here at the session, is a set of SDKs and agents that uh, help you instrument your applications and collect telemetry, metrics, logs, and traces, um, and send that telemetry to the destination of your choice. And that, that last part, the destination of your choice, is, is very important. That is the open and open telemetry, and, and these folks are gonna go uh, a lot deeper on that later in the session. Okay, so um, <clears throat> we're here to take you through the steps that you need to get up and running with OpenTelemetry on ECS, which is Amazon's uh, native container orchestrator, uh, as well as on Kubernetes. Uh, we are using EKS in this case, but this stuff is equally applicable to self-managed Kubernetes on AWS um, or Kubernetes on-prem. Um, but, you know, this is the observability track, so we'll do a little bit of, like, level setting on observability. So, um, observability, once upon a time, uh, was called monitoring. Um, if you're as old as I am, you might have carried a pager, and you might have gotten woken up in the middle of the night when a power supply died, or when some even older grump on Nanog uh, typoed a BGP allow list, if that sounds familiar to anybody. Um, <clears throat> good observability, good monitoring back then uh, meant some pretty simple things. It meant um, <clears throat> like good mean time to detect, uh, good coverage, you, you had like a good coverage of your estate, and you had a pretty su high signal to noise ratio on your alerts, you weren't, you know, spuriously woken up in the middle of the night. Um, today, however, uh, things have changed a little bit. The systems that we rely on, and that really society relies on, like we're all, we're all on top of this stuff, um, they've gotten exponentially more powerful, and as a side effect, have gotten uh, quite a lot more complex. We have microservices, we have service meshes, we have auto-scaled pods, and so on and so forth. Um, and we rely on the system so much more heavily. Uh, it, is, it is necessary but not sufficient to react to your alerts to like get up in the middle of the night and do your thing. Um, <clears throat> you, you really need uh, depth of your instrumentation um, and the ability to collect and analyze all of that in one place uh, in order to look around corners, in order to predict failures in order to really build and operate some of these really complex, really high-scale systems. Um, and in the context of all that, having uh, great observability uh, becomes a necessity to, to borrow from the venue that we're at. It is, it is table stakes now. Uh, you need great instrumentation um, <clears throat> to interrogate, to uh, correlate, and to visualize your telemetry. Um, now, AWS, uh, we provide a couple things to help you do that. On your left, my right, uh, of the slide, 
is our uh, set of services and solutions um, related to CloudWatch. Um, and CloudWatch is great. CloudWatch is uh, <clears throat> like battle-tested. CloudWatch is used to actually monitor uh, and observe uh, a lot of um, the services that make up AWS. Um, and, it, and CloudWatch is a great solution if, if for example, you are all in on AWS. Um, very deeply integrated, very broad coverage. We, however, are gonna spend a bunch of time on the right side uh, of this slide, because um, I'm an open source guy. These are my open source friends. Um, <clears throat> and these are our open source services. And these are great choices if um, you are all in on Kubernetes, if you are pursuing an open source, source, so, uh, open source first strategy, um, <clears throat> uh, or if, if you're in a, a place where you have hybrid deployments and you're looking to provide a consistent experience you know, on-prem and in the cloud. Um, and we've got great fully managed uh, open source services uh, as part of our portfolio. Uh, we have Amazon Managed Grafana, um, <clears throat> which is a, a great visualization tool. We've got Open Search for log analytics. Um, and for metrics and alerting, we have Amazon Managed Prometheus. Um, we'll go into to a little more depth on all those a little bit later in the session. Um, for our managed open source offerings, uh, we really strive to bring all of the things that you love about AWS services. Um, so that is high availability, that is scalability, <clears throat> uh, that is uh, pay per use, that is uh, you know, easy, easy metered billing, um, <clears throat> as well as all of the things that you love about open source services. So that is the transparency, interoperability, and really like the amazing communities that work together to build this stuff uh, together. So, Managed service for Prometheus, um, uh, AMP for short. This is our Prometheus compatible data store built on Cortex Metrics. Um, Cortex Metrics is a CNCF project. Uh, quick pitch, we are doing a lot of really cool stuff in Cortex Metrics. Um, we are always looking for collaborators. Uh, please reach out if you're interested. Lots of interesting uh, sort of problems and problem solving there. Um, and Managed Prometheus is your metrics database. It accepts metrics from your workloads, either through OpenTelemetry or through Prometheus native uh, metric scraping. Uh, it stores them, um, and it allows you to configure alerts and integrates with tools like Grafana for visualization and graphing. We have done a bunch of cool stuff in Prometheus this year. Uh, I would say the work that I am most proud of in, in, in our teams has been the work that we've done on scale. We just released uh, 200 million um, active time series per workspace, which is a big deal. We scaled that up, I think, in order of magnitude this year. Um, so big shout out to uh, Alan and Alvin, who are our open uh, uh, Cortex metrics maintainers in, in Amazon land. Um, <clears throat> but this is really interesting and difficult optimization work, especially because we are, are doing this for a highly available like multi-AZ uh, service. We've also been doing a bunch of cool stuff in Managed Grafana. Um, Managed Grafana is, is kind of the same, same recipe. Uh, it is a best-in-class open source tool delivered as a highly available, like fully managed um, service in AWS. <clears throat> Uh, you're probably all familiar with Grafana. Um, we've done some pretty cool stuff in, in Grafana uh, this year, um, including uh, better integration with Prometheus for alerting, um, and finally delivering access to data sources and private VPCs. Uh, these were both pretty big engineering efforts, so we're pretty happy about that. Um, and we are always looking for opportunities to expand the capabilities of our open source uh, offerings. Um, and we are really proud to work with our partners and our collaborators and the CNCF to contribute that work back to these projects so that all of you, all of us, can benefit from it wherever we run. Um, <clears throat> and I think that's it for my section. I will hand over to Rodrigue, who will spend some time on instrumenting with OpenTelemetry. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Rodrigue. I'm a specialist solutions architect uh, focusing on observability. 
So now we are going to talk a little bit more about instrumentation using open telemetry. Like how to really, what, what does that mean uh, really? Um, so let's take an application. When you get started with an application, I think, um, when you want to have uh, visibility into, into your application, this is how it looks like. Like you will have an SDK to have metrics inside, your, to, to get metrics from your application. Uh, if you're doing tracing as well, you have maybe a different SDK. Uh, you, you will use something different for logs. And yeah, this is, this is fine. Um, when it goes to deployment, when you start to deploy your application, then you get with uh, a lot of collectors uh, into, uh, in, inside your containers or uh, your, your pods and, and everything. Uh, show of hands, who is in the room can relate to that? All right, all right, that's, that's good. Um, and then those data, they end up in different backends, and which makes it a little bit hard to, to correlate uh, those signals. Um, so open telemetry um, came, uh, comes um, just to do that, to solve that problem. So it's a single uh, vendor agnostic and instrumentation library uh, that it's meant to do that. So you have, um, obviously it varies per language, but you have one protocol, and then there is um, different uh, implementation of that protocol per language, but you have one thing, so you can instrument your application uh, once. Uh, when it comes to deployment, you have a single binary that you will use to flow that signals to the back end of your destinations, right? Uh, you have full control of your data. Uh, we'll, we'll see after that you can have pipelines to direct your data to the backends that you are interested in. So with the schema I showed, uh, we'll, have na we'll have that now. So you have uh, the OTLP protocol, open telemetry protocol for tracing, for metrics, and logs. So logs is uh, currently a work in progress on the community, uh, but the full picture looks like this. You will have our AWS distro for open telemetry collector. So you have a collector that will take those signals and then still send to the backends of your destination. So what is super powerful about this is that you will just instrument once. Once you need to change your destination, everything happens on the collector. You don't have to re-instrument your applications again, right? So, um, so yeah. And then I talked about AWS Distro for Open Telemetry. And then what is uh, ADOT? So ADOT is a production-ready, secure um, distribution of Open Telemetry backed by AWS. So this is our teams. We make sure that it can scale for you. It can. Uh, it is secure, it does what it's intended to do. Uh, so we select what's in, inside and we provide that for customers. Uh, you get AWS support when you use a, uh, ADOT. All right, so let's actually see an example of instrumentation. So there is this QR code, so if you can uh, take your, your phones and then scan this. Uh, so there is a sample application uh, we have uh, developed. Um, there is, it's, um, it's a vote application I will show uh, just after. Uh, how to use that application. Um, so I'll wait maybe a couple of seconds, right? All right, I see. Okay. So uh, you have this uh, application. What it's actually doing is that you can just pick a color, refresh, yeah, you can vote uh, as much as you want, right? Um, and then I will show how this application is using instrumentation with the, the Go SDK. But before that, let's see uh, how, it, how, it, how is it designed. So there is a front application with Amplify, AWS Amplify, uh, that calls a backend service deployed on Amazon ECS. The Amazon ECS container has an open telemetry collector. So the application has an SDK, use the SDK to collect the signals. Uh, the collector takes, this, that takes those data and then send to, um, send to tracing for um, AWS X-Ray for tracing, and then manage service for Prometheus for custom metrics. Um, and then this application makes uh, HTTP calls to another service to have a beautiful trace. So let's actually see uh, what it looks like. All right. Um, all right, so this is the, the backend uh, back portion where we use open telemetry. Um, so first of all, we'll start with initializing open telemetry. 
So it will look like this, right? So we'll start with a trace exporter. You need something to export your traces to your destinations. Um, and then inside the trace exporter, you need a context. This is super important. I'm gonna talk about context a lot, uh, but this is how basically you propagate the trace headers uh, to the destination. So you, you collect all the pieces of the transaction together. Um, so in, in this case, we'll just uh, have, a, have a gRPC exporter uh, to send the traces. Um, next, we will uh, use the, the, the service name resource. So basically, when, when you have your traces, uh, you, want to, you want it a, um, a, a name that you can relate to. Um, so this is how we do it. So we'll give a, a, a nice name to our, our map. And, uh, and in this uh, here, we'll, need the, we'll configure the trace provider. Uh, with different options, you can configure sampling um, to, uh, to, to take all, all the data or a portion of your data. Uh, you can batch the data as well, and then uh, yeah, we'll put everything together uh, in this in this context. Um, again, this is a global uh, global set settings to set up the trace provider and uh, and uh, get starting with with tracing. Um, so let's actually see. Uh, so this is called here uh, something interesting. So this is a, a backend that exposes an API. Uh, we have a router, an HTTP router in Go. Uh, so this is manual instrumentation, but we can actually use uh, some libraries. So in this case, uh, line 145, uh, we use the open telemetry, um, open telemetry instrumentation for, 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 for this library, Gorilla. They provide an open telemetry uh, instrumentation uh, uh, library. So you can actually use that to automatically uh, create traces for all the ex uh, HTTP endpoints that you expose with that uh, library. So in here, for example, I will serve custom metrics with Prometheus. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. And then this is the main uh, core of the application. I expose a HTTP post here, and then we'll get uh, into that. Before that, um, so we'll have also custom metrics with Prometheus that will go and manage Prometheus. Uh, so this is, in this case, a counter. So every time you have clicked on the, on the color, we'll increment that counter as well. So here we have this function. Uh, um, not everything is here. I have uh, hidden uh, some, uh, some portion uh, for simplicity. But basically, you have the context. This is super uh, important. So from the HTTP request, I will get the context. Uh, and the context will hold the, 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 trace, the trace information. Uh, so getting the context, from the context, I will get the span, the current span. So the span is a portion of the transaction in a trace. Um, and then I will do my query with the context and then all the different information. We'll see that in a minute. Um, in, the, in the logs, um, so something super interesting. So you want to be able to correlate the logs with uh, what is happening with your trace and the logs in the application for a particular transaction. So something interesting is to log the trace ID. So I get the trace ID from X-ray and I log it uh, systematically into my log. So this is actually a good practice. Um, and then when I get the response, I will increment the counter with the color that you have, you have uh, selected. So the counter becomes a, uh, a label in the Prometheus metrics, right? And then here I'm doing another query just to show you the variety of, uh, of um, to have a, a map that can go into multiple places. Right, so this is the same context, uh, again, that I will use to, um, to, to do my query. So let's actually dive a little bit deeper into this portion. So the query, something uh, interesting is, you see the HTTP new request with context. So this is where we're gonna use the context uh, that was propagated. Um, and on the HTTP client, we will use the transport provided by OpenTelemetry HTTP, which is a, a library made uh, with the SDKs to use OpenTelemetry uh, in your application. So you don't have to do um, a lot of things, uh, actually. So you can use those libraries and then um, use your HTTP transport uh, with that. So same thing for um, uh, both types of queries is the same, same concept. 
uh, context is propagated, uh, propagated with the open uh, hotel HTTP uh, library. All right, so let's actually see, when this is deployed, let, let's actually see how we can exploit the results. So here, I'm using manage uh, Grafana uh, to display uh, those metrics. So on the, on the, on the left, uh, you can see the metrics, um, you can see all the colors uh, that you have seen on the application. Um, and this is actually Prometheus metric, so you can see uh, COP301 votes total, um, and then they are displayed by color. So we can see what uh, you have uh, been doing with the application. On the right, you have uh, ECS, memory, so the containers uh, environment metrics, memory and CPU. Uh, and here you can see the trace map. So you can see the, the transaction from beginning to end. So you have the client, which call uh, uh, Amazon ECS Fargate, and then uh, AWS Lambda and SQS um, in, the, uh, in final. So you saw that I use also the logs. Uh, I, I, I log the trace ID in the logs. This is super important because uh, with, with, Manage Grafana, with Grafana, you can um, have the trace ID inside the logs, and then he will detect, uh, he would attempt to make a correlation with your trace and the logs. So I can do something like that. So if I click in here on the trace, uh, you will see the detailed transaction. Uh, so what happens uh, inside uh, for that transaction in particular. So here you can see that I have a HTTP call uh, to Lambda and then check ip.amazon.com, which takes most of the time in that transaction. Uh, and this is how you can use tracing to detect performance issues. Like in this, in, this, in, this, um, in this transaction, if we had those requests in parallel, uh, I would have gained 30 milliseconds. So this is how you can use tracing and visualize how you can improve uh, your overall health of, the of your applications. And you can see all of the segments, uh, SQS and uh, everything together. All right. So that was it for how to use uh, um, SDKs and open telemetry instrumentation inside your application. So for the deployment portion, I'm going to pass to Imaya, and he's going to walk you through uh, everything about deployment. All right. Thank you, Rodrigue. Um, this one. All right, perfect. Uh, first of all, folks, it's a privilege to be here in front of you all. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, by the way, there's at least four to five seats, empty seats in the front, folks. If you want to sit in the front, uh, if you're comfortable, please uh, make use of it. Uh, my name is Amir Kumar Jagannathan. I'm a principal solution architect. I focus on open source observability. And uh, in this part of the uh, session, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the open telemetry components and uh, different patterns that you can uh, kind of think of when you're using open telemetry collector to deploy an Amazon ECS and EKS. So what you saw, Rodrigue showing instrumentation of the application using Go programming language, and you, all, and you saw Grafana and how you can visualize and all of that. And that data was sent to a destination like Amazon Manuscript or Prometheus, or um, it could be AWS X-Ray for traces and so on. But in between from the instrumentation and visualization, there in the middle is where the open telemetry collector is. That is what is, that's the agent, or, or that's the binary that collects the data and sends to different destinations. So there are different uh, components in the open telemetry collector. Essentially, there are four main, um, four main components there. The first one starts with the receiver. As the name goes, the receiver component is responsible for uh, basically going and collecting the signals from different destinations. It could be the Prometheus receiver, which would go to Prometheus endpoints and scrape the metrics that are exposed in Prometheus format, or it could be the open telemetry receiver that would receive traces or metrics in open telemetry format. And the receivers, essentially, the, the single job of the receivers are to uh, go to the, the destination where or the source where the metrics is or the traces are, the signals are, uh, to use a common word, and then uh, get those signals and keep them in memory. Okay? Then you have the processor component. So processor allows you to kind of process the data. So what that means is you could, for example, use uh, a batch processor to group the signals to keep them in memory so you can minimize the number of calls being made to the destination. So this is all happening in memory. Or you can use something like a filter processor to filter certain kinds of data out or maybe add additional information so you can enrich the data that you're collecting. So that you can so that you can make use of the data to kind of uh, troubleshoot with much better context or correlate that 
with some other signal that you're collecting. Then you have the exporter, as the name goes. It is uh, the, it, the responsibility of the exporters is to send the data to a destination. It could be uh, using AWS X-ray exporter to send the trace data to the X-ray service, or it could be Prometheus remote write exporter that you can use to send your uh, a Prometheus metrics to a remote long-term storage solution like Cortex or Thanos or even managed service for Prometheus. Or it could be AWS EMF exporter that you can use to send the metrics to uh, CloudWatch. And in this context, we're talking about open source, so we'll, we'll stick to managed Prometheus service, right? Then you have extensions. So extensions are um, essentially uh, uh, components that allow you to expand. Uh, the features or functionalities of the collector. So uh, basically those that don't fit into the three uh, other uh, components that I talked about all fall into extensions. Um, one of the, uh, there could be health extension that allows you to kind of see how your collector is performing and what kind of uh, resources it is utilizing. And uh, there's SIGV4 auth extension, for example, that uh, AWS developed that allows you to make SIGV4 uh, 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 authentication uh, API to AWS API calls because that is required to make uh, calls to AWS APIs. So one classic example is you would use the Prometheus remote write exporter to send uh, Prometheus metrics to Amazon managers for Prometheus and you would authenticate using the SIGV4 um, extension. So the ADOT collector has a lot of components. It's, these are all the components that are available at the moment in ADOT collector. Just to kind of go back to what Nick said earlier, uh, the ADOT collector is a redistribution of the open telemetry collector by AWS. So there are a lot of other components that are available in, um, uh, in the open telemetry repo on, on GitHub. So what we do is, uh, again, every single line of code that we contribute, everything goes to the upstream, and we, we pick the... Uh, from there, we pick uh, the, the components that, are, that make sense, that are more mature or stable, and uh, we ensure that it goes through the AppSec process, and we build a, a and we redistribute it for customers to make use of. And you also get AWS support when you use ADOT Collector. So if you want to build, say, for example, a uh, manage, you want to use managed Prometheus service and you're collecting metrics from your environment, you potentially make use of these components in the ADOT Collector. So it's not the only way to do it, but you could potentially, for example, uh, obviously you would use the Prometheus receiver to receive the Prometheus metrics, or you could also be using the OTLP receiver if your application is instrumented using the open telemetry protocol. But uh, currently, as of now, there's Prometheus metrics. It's, it's very popular. It's, it's, uh, it's available. Uh, it's being exposed by many, uh, in, in, in many environments like Kubernetes and so on. So we're going to talk more, we're going uh, to focus more on Prometheus metrics than open telemetry at the moment. Um, and uh, you, you can potentially use the batch processor to batch the metrics or group them so you don't, um, uh, to a certain period or something like that, so you don't have to uh, make too many API calls to, to the destination. And you can use something like a metrics transform processor, which you can use to uh, kind of add, remove, delete, um, extract certain uh, certain metrics or certain attributes from it, or in other, in other words, certain labels from the metrics uh, that you're collecting. All this is happening in memory, uh, just so you know. And the filter process, like I mentioned before, you can filter certain metrics uh, altogether completely based on maybe regular expressions, or you can even have a strict rule. You just want to drop a certain metric names, and you can do all of that here. So this allows you to have a lot more control um, in, the, uh, in the pipeline. Then you have the Prometheus remote write exporter that is used to remote write metrics uh, to a long-term storage solution, like I mentioned before. And if you are sending it to manage Prometheus service in this PR, you would have to use a SIGV4 auth extension to, to, make the, uh, uh, to authenticate the calls. So what does it look like, or what might uh, uh, the pipeline uh, look like if you're using AWS X-Ray? So you, would, you could use open telemetry receiver if you have instrumentary application using the open telemetry SDK, or you could also use the AWS X-Ray receiver if your application is instrumented, use, instrumented using the AWS X-Ray SDK. Then uh, that would be the receiver that would be collecting all the spans or uh, traces. Then you could use attributes processor. That is a generic processor. Again, there are processors that are built specifically for certain types of signals, and there are some generic processors that you can actually use for any type of signal. Attributes processor is one of them. You can actually use it to filter, add context to the, uh, uh, the spans that you're collecting, or even the metric you can operate, uh, the attribute processor for, uh, to operate on metrics as well. And uh, you can use the span processor to kind of change the span status or filter the span or change the span name or all of that. This, is, this process is specifically built for um, uh, handling traces, right? And then you could use the AWS X-ray exporter to send the data to the X-ray destination. Right? Um, 
So like I mentioned before, let's take a look at some of the patterns that you can actually use to uh, use the ADOT collector to, uh, to collect signals from Amazon. So uh, there are some components specifically built for Amazon ECS, uh, starting with um, uh, the receiver. Uh, AWS Container Metrics Receiver is, is a purpose-built receiver for Amazon ECS. This actually makes use of the ECS Task Metadata APIs. It is used to collect infrastructure metrics. It, it, makes, it makes those calls on a, uh, on, a, on a regular basis that you can configure, and it collects uh, information from the Task Metadata API, and it uh, kind of converts those into metric format, that uh, open telemetry metric format, and keeps it in memory. That is specifically built for ECS, right? Then you have Exporter. If, you're sending to uh, Prometheus and manage Prometheus service, which you would use. And then you could also potentially use some special purpose-built um, extensions, like the ECS Observer. ECS Observer allows you to uh, collect application metrics or custom application metrics that are in Prometheus format that helps you to do service discovery of your Prometheus endpoints in your ECS cluster. Then you have, obviously, the SIGG4 uh, authentication extension that uh, you would use to authenticate your calls that you're making, right? When you're... Um, if, you, if you're creating a task, ECS task definition today, if you change it to the, uh, the new ECS, uh, ECS uh, console, then you would actually be able to configure all of that really easily um, in, the, uh, in the task definition creation UI itself. So you could simply sort of go select the uh, task collection, uh, so trace collection checkbox, and you could select what type of metrics that you want to collect. If your application is instrumented using open telemetry, you can choose that, or Prometheus, you can choose that in the dropdown. And then you, all you have to do is simply specify the destination that you're sending to. In this case, we are sending all of this data to manage Prometheus service. You just have to specify the remote write location. And you can also see that the, um, uh, the, uh, uh, the IP address or, or the endpoint where the metrics are being exposed, all this, informa this information is actually written into the environment variables by the task once you create the task definition. So those are available when you're actually configuring the task, right? So what happens in the background is essentially this. So this task, def task definition, when you, when you create, it really creates a sidecar uh, ADOT collector. So along with the application, this is also running, and there are certain things available. So there's really nothing uh, spectacular that is going on here, but it is it just deployed the sidecar. It can collect the traces. It can collect uh, infrastructure metrics using the ECS container um, um, metrics receiver. And then also it is also using the um, ECS observer extension to application metrics from the Prometheus endpoints, right? How does this look like um, in the configuration? That's where uh, the important thing is, right? Like, how, does, how is this collector even uh, configured? So I'm going to highlight, like, in gray, the area that I'm talking about so you can actually follow, um, uh, follow better. So first, we'll start with the receiver. So the receiver, as you can see, uh, there's, there, there's a gRPC endpoint, there's a HTTP endpoint that is configured, and these are all default uh, uh, you know, endpoints and ports. So the assumption is that your application is sending metrics in, the send, in that endpoint, or configured to send metrics in that endpoint, or it could be traces also. So that is already there in the configuration. Then you have the AWS ECS container metrics receiver. Like I mentioned before, this is the one that is making the API to the uh, metadata APIs and collecting all the metrics. Then you have the Prometheus configuration here. So here it is going to scrape from the endpoint that you configured, the AWS Prometheus scraping endpoint that is on line 22, and it's going to scrape uh, every 20 seconds. It is going to it's, it's going to go to the hit the endpoint and scrape the metrics from the place that you configured. Then um, it's going to keep that in memory. And we are batching this for every 30 seconds, uh, or if the batch size gets to uh, uh, 50 uh, uh, 50 spans. So the, there are two. Uh, batching configurations in the processor. There's one batching configuration for traces, one for metrics. The first one is for uh, the traces. Uh, just going back on that, if there are 50 spans at any given point, it will send them to the destination. Or if the if there's not 50 spans, if the, the time if it's 30 seconds, it will uh, send whatever span is available to the destination. Then you have the metrics. Time out is 60 seconds. Every 60 seconds, it is going to start sending the metrics, all the samples that it has in memory to the destination. Um, we are also using a filter processor here. So this filter processor has a strict match type. It is only going to include these metrics that you see here uh, in the configuration that are included. Uh, only those will be sent to uh, manage Prometheus service. So um, exporter is the other component. So here you can see that there is Prometheus remote write exporter that we are using. It is uh, configured to the, again, the endpoint that was configured when you create the 
created the task definition. That is where the data is being sent to, or the metrics are being sent to. It uses a SIGV for authentication extension. Then we have another, um, another interesting one called resource to telemetry um, conversion option that is enabled to do to true. When you do that, it, uh, it includes the uh, resource information into the, uh, into the signal. So in this case, it is, uh, um, it is Prometheus metric, so it is going to add them as labels. So you will get additional information about which particular task it is from and so on in the metric labels. Then um, we have the pipeline. So if you don't include in the pipeline, none of those things matter. So here you can actually create the pipeline, putting all of these things together. We have a trace pipeline where we use the open telemetry receiver. Then we have uh, the processors, the, the resource detection processor, uh, which I kind of forgot to mention before. The resource detection processor allows you to get the resource information from your environment. So in this case, uh, let's say, for example, if using EC2, it will use the EC2 um, tags APIs and get the tags information and add that in the, in the spans or the metrics that you're sending. And if it's ECS, it will again use the metadata endpoint and it will collect that information, add the, um, add the ECS task information and service information in the data that it's collecting. Then uh, we have two metrics pipelines. The first one is the metrics application pipeline. That is for the Prometheus metrics that we're sending. So you can see the receiver configured for that and the process and the uh, exporters configured for that. The second one is the infrastructure metrics that we are configured with the AWS container metrics uh, receiver, and then we are sending, obviously, to the uh, Prometheus remote head extension. And the extensions uh, are to be configured. We are using a SIGV4 authentication, and there is also a health check extension uh, that is also configured. Health check extension is, is basically uh, something that allows you to kind of know about the uh, performance and health of the collector itself. That is something that if you're uh, interested in debugging. Uh, all of this configuration is actually available on GitHub. You can um, actually look it up. It is, uh, it is up there uh, in our open telemetry collector repo uh, in our examples. So putting all of this together, uh, that is, these are all the actions that the open telemetry collector is performing, right? So it's, it's invoking ECS task metadata endpoint to collect the infrastructure metrics. Then it processes that information. This is the pipeline or the configuration that I uh, talked through. Then uh, it scrapes the Prometheus targets based on, again, the configuration that you made collector. Then uh, it receives the open telemetry traces, processes all of that, and sends to the destination. All right, so let's look at another pattern. So it's not that there has to be a sidecar pattern all the time, right? So you can, you, can, you might want to deploy just one copy of the collector at some point, and you would probably want to uh, minimize the number of sidecars that you're deploying, so you probably want to optimize the, uh, the infrastructure. So how would you do that, right? Um, the collector configuration could look like this. In this case, it is primarily going to be application, custom application metrics and Prometheus uh, endpoints than infrastructure metrics. So you can see that we're using ECS Observer, and in this, in this particular configuration, for every 60 seconds, this ECS Observer is going to go um, to ECS APIs, ECS APIs, and it'll look for that cluster name that is configured here. Then uh, it'll look for in, in that particular region that is configured in the configuration. And uh, it will look for a particular service name with the pattern having uh, with retail dash. Then uh, there is, uh, with, and we'll look for only tasks that have this ARN pattern, right? So you can be very specific about which tasks and services or cluster that you want collect metrics from. You might, you could think of, you know, you can be innovative, you can think of multiple patterns. Say, for example, you could have an entire cluster full of uh, the collectors, and where applications are deployed in different ECS clusters, where you just have collectors in one place, and each one will be responsible for going and reaching out to multiple different clusters and collecting the metrics from there, right? It, this will, this should work as long as you don't have any network limitations, right? So you can be very innovative when you're using these, uh, this ECS observer. So once it, uh, once it does all of that, what this ECS observer does in this particular configuration is that it places the, service, the discovered targets into a file called ecssdtargets.yaml file, and then the receiver, the Prometheus receiver, picks it up. So it, what Prometheus receiver in this, in this uh, configuration does it, it uses file-based service discovery. It is going to read the targets.yaml file, and it, it, it will essentially have um, a list of endpoints at which uh, the Prometheus metrics are being exposed. This will basically go scrape those endpoints and collect the metrics. That's what the Prometheus uh, receiver would do. And the, uh, the, the batching is very similar to what we discussed earlier. And uh, the, uh, uh, the exporter is also very similar to what we discussed earlier. It's a pretty straightforward endpoint and the SIGV for authentication exporter. 
um, the pipeline, we are putting all of that together. We are uh, just using the Prometheus um, receiver because that is the only one that matters here. And then we are exporting to the Prometheus remote write um, uh, exporter. All right. So let's, um, again, this configuration is also available on, on GitHub. So you can take a look at that. There are multiple, not only this, this is only a subset of all the configurations that we have available. Uh, to put all of that together, these are the actions that are performed by the collector. It invokes the ECS uh, API endpoints to get the list of uh, tasks and services, all of that that are running, and it essentially gives that information to the Prometheus receiver uh, and let the Prometheus receiver go scrape those endpoints, right? Um, well, so we, we cannot not talk about EKS, right? So we have a lot of customers who are asking about, like, how can I monitor my EKS clusters using open telemetry? And uh, uh, Prometheus is extremely popular in the Kubernetes world, like I mentioned before. So how does that happen? Obviously, one way to do that is you can, you can deploy a sidecar, and you could uh, uh, simply have the collector configure or scrape metrics from your local host, and which straightforward, which is kind of very similar to what we saw in the ECS example, right? So there's nothing uh, really extraordinary there. But um, you, could also, um, uh, you could also think of a little bit more of a complex use case. Let's say you have, you have two managed Prometheus uh, uh, workspaces because you wanted to have one workspace that would be used by your developers where you want all the metrics, raw metrics, and they want to be able to debug, they want to be able to uh, identify uh, issues, um, if there are any, and all of that. You, you have a lot of metrics. Maybe there is one more workspace where you have, uh, that's in a, maybe in a different account, where your, uh, your DevOps team, your teams that, is, that are operating the environment, they only want to know a certain certain types of metrics. And uh, this, is a, this is a very practical use case. This actually came from a customer, right? How would I do that? So one obvious example uh, or approach that you could take is you could deploy two collectors. You could deploy one collector with, with certain you know, filters and all of that, and you can deploy another collector, and you can keep on going with you know, as many uh, workspaces that you have. But is that the only way to do it? There's also, there, there's a, you, you can optimize it. In fact, OpenTelemetry allows you to have multiple pipelines as, uh, pipelines in one collector, right? So that is what you would do. So here, as you can see here, we have um, multiple um, uh, authentication. So you can have two, we have here two SIGV4 authentication extensions configured. The first one is, let's assume, it's going to developer workload where they have all the metrics, so that's going to use the uh, same workspace, same region. And then this one, you're going to send it to a different account, to a different AWS account, and so you want to assume role, so which you can configure in the SIGV4 configuration there. So that is going to assume that role um, that you're configuring there, so which is going to be able to send metrics to that different destination. The um, next is the uh, typical Prometheus scrape configuration uh, for Kubernetes. It's actually using the Kubernetes service discovery, so that is, uh, if you're familiar with Prometheus, that is simply what it is. There's nothing unique about that itself in, in this particular uh, configuration. But in the exporters, you can see that there are two. Uh, the first one is actually the one that is going to send to the first um, Prometheus workspace, where all the metrics are being sent to that, and you have all of them uh, available. And in the second one is the uh, SIGV4 auth number two, which uses the assume role, which is going to send. So we have two exporters configured here, two separate um, uh, sections. And we also have this uh, filter expression, so filter processor. We're making use of that to filter the data. So we have that filter uh, condition here. We are only uh, including metrics that start with node underscore and pod underscore. And then we are including metrics that this, uh, there's a strict match saying anything that says unwanted metrics, we're just dropping all of them, right? Um, and um, so when you put all of this together in the pipeline, this all makes sense. So in the first uh, pipeline, you can see it is, it is just raw, the Prometheus receiver and the exporter. The second one, we have, we have included the filter, so it all comes together. So the second one is where you will only get the subset of the metrics. In the first one, you get all of the metrics that are collected from that environment. Well, so um, again, this configuration is, um, um, uh, I don't believe it's available on GitHub, but we'll see if you can make it available. Okay, so then, um, so what if you wanna, you wanna evenly distribute the load across the open telemetry collectors? So that is, that's a real 
problem. Like there are situations where customers have really large EKS clusters and they run into issues with now I, my, my collector is dying, like how do I do that? So one of the ways that you can think of, it's not the only way, but you can think of deploying it as a daemon set and have the collectors only scrape data or metrics or uh, receive all the signals from the own, um, from the same node that they are running on, right? So this is done very easily. This is really nothing to do with uh, open telemetry collector configuration in particular. This you can do with, uh, with uh, this is in the context of Prometheus metrics. We are only keeping metrics, uh, in this case, that originate from the same node. And because you're doing it in, in the relabeled configs, it doesn't even go to the target and read all of this. It only reads the same, uh, from the same um, endpoints from the node, the node that is running on. Right? It, it is, it is kind of straightforward if you think about it. There could, be, um, there could be another use case. So what, um, there, there could be a scenario where you want to have high availability of your collectors, right? So what does, um, it, it is possible that you want to have more than one copy of collector deployed in your cluster. This is again a real world example that customers actually use. Um, you don't want the collector to be a single point of failure, so if that is not well, um, that doesn't have enough resources. If it dies, then you don't have any visibility. So you could potentially deploy more than one copy of the collector, uh, but the question is, so, what, so how does that work? And am I being double charged for ingestion? Because uh, am I going to end up with duplicate metrics? And those kind of questions come into play. Um, so if, if, it is, if the context is about managed Prometheus service, it is actually solved very easily by uh, the combination the open telemetry collector and the Prometheus service itself. So what the Prometheus service does is it actually um, uh, allows you to add external labels in your open telemetry collector. It, it doesn't have to be open telemetry collector. It could even be Prometheus uh, agent or Prometheus server that you're running in your environment. It is not, it's not open telemetry specific. So all you have to do is simply add a couple of external labels. So you would add a label called cluster and you will have, these are two separate configurations, right? So in, the, in both configurations, the cluster label will have the same value, so indicating that these are part of the same group of uh, agents. And then in the replica label, you would want to individually identify which, la which collector this is. So the first one would say replica one, the second one would say replica two. So the managed Prometheus service uh, does a leader election process when, you're, when you configure something like this. The metrics are being sent they are sourcing from the same place, but they're being sent to the same destination. The uh, managed Prometheus service would do a leader election process, and it would just pick one leader, uh, let's say replica one, and it would only uh, ingest metrics that are coming from that particular source, right? And uh, if the metrics are not coming in for a certain period of time, then the managed Prometheus server would automatically switch to another uh, replica, so another collector. So as long as that, that matrix is available, it's, it'll continue to ingest metrics from the replica too. And that will continue as long as the replica two is, is, is alive and well and sending metrics. And if something happens to that, then it'll again do the leader election process, whatever is available, it starts sending. So this allows you to do, um, you don't have to really do much other than just the external labels, uh, the combination of, uh, because of the managed Prometheus service takes care of this, you really don't have uh, much to do. And also, the, like I said, you're not being charged twice. It, there's no uh, double ingestion because ingestion doesn't even happen. It, it stops even before ingestion happens. So that's all good. There are so many different um, ways of doing this. Then one of, the, uh, one of the things that come up is, okay, so how do I make use of, um, make use of something like a Kubernetes operator to make my life easier? So that's a, that's a question that comes up uh, to us a lot of time. So um, we, I believe sometime in May, we launched the uh, AWS Distro for OpenTelemetry ADOT operator uh, as an add-on in EKS. So you could actually deploy the ADOT operator as an add-on from the EKS console, or you can, you can just deploy it through CLI and so on. Um, you would, this, add -on, this operator actually maintains just one custom resource, which is the open telemetry collector. So you can tell the operator, or you can define your custom resource in such a way, however you want to deploy. You can deploy it as a daemon set, as a deployment, and how many replicas you want, or you can deploy it as a stateful set, which is, which is very interesting because if you deploy it as a stateful set, let's say you have a, a large cluster, you want to deploy it like 10 copies of, of the open telemetry collector, and the operator will deploy 10 copies, 10 stateful sets, and it would actually evenly distribute the load across these 10 um, stateful sets automatically. 
uh, that's a really cool functionality that uh, we do have customers that are make using, making use of that. And um, uh, you can, uh, like I said, you can deploy it as daemon and so on. Let the operator manage the lifecycle of the collector itself. Uh, but, but that could, um, while this is all uh, easy and also makes it, uh, makes it a lot more easier than doing everything yourself, but a lot of customers uh, that we spoke to also wanted to know, uh, what, were asking us like, how we can help them automate. Are, what is, are you opinionated about like, what kind of metrics that I should collect, particularly from EKS? Uh, how do I monitor infrastructure metrics? What kind of dashboards should I create in Grafana, for example? Right? Um, that's when we started working on the AWS Observability Accelerator. So the AWS Observability Accelerator is a Terraform uh, module. It's, it's an open source project. It is available on GitHub. Um, what you, we have multiple examples. We have uh, infrastructure uh, monitoring for EKS. We have uh, certain workloads that we can allow, that, that you can monitor using that, like Java JMX, Nginx, and so on. Um, or if you have any endpoints that are simply exposing Prometheus metrics, and if those pods are marked uh, Prometheus um, uh, to true, then we will go scrape those endpoints as well and collect those metrics and send to uh, the managed Prometheus service. So we do a bunch of things there. So um, when, uh, when you deploy the observability accelerator, so we deploy the open telemetry operator. We uh, set up the cert manager, which is required for the, um, the uh, Kubernetes APIs to make the uh, calls to the operator, then you have, we deploy the ADOT collector based on the custom resource definition that you specify. Then we can also optionally create the Prometheus workspace if you, uh, if you, want, uh, if you want that to be created, or you can configure an existing Prometheus workspace if you want. Then we create uh, a bunch of recording rules, alerting rules, and uh, a lot of, uh, so that allows you to sort of create uh, um, two monitors health of your EKS clusters. Then we uh, uh, deploy like about six uh, Grafana dashboards to, uh, for you to visualize how that, is, um, how that is happening. Could you unlock this laptop, please? All right, thank you, Rodri. So that's um, that's where uh, that's our uh, repo. So you may, uh, under it's under AWS Observability um, uh, reg, um, um, repo. So here, uh, for example, here if I, I'm in the Managed Prometheus Service workspace, I actually deploy the uh, accelerator. So you can actually see a uh, bunch of rules that the accelerator deploys, and you can see the alerts, uh, the alert manager configuration. This is just a default configuration, but uh, these are all the, the rules for, we have infrastructure rules for alerting rules, and we have recording rules. There's a lot of metrics that we aggregate and make it easy for us to visualize, and we deploy this dashboard, um, uh, dashboards as well. There are about six or seven dashboards that we deploy, and all of, this is all, you just clone the repo, you just uh, give your workspace name and Grafana workspace name. Uh, in just like about two minutes, you have uh, the operator, you have the collector, you have the recording rules, alerting rules, dashboards, all of that. You basically get end-to-end -end monitoring for a DKS cluster using managed Prometheus and Grafana. Uh, I encourage you to check it out. Uh, like I mentioned, this is an open source project. We track all the issues here. Uh, we'd be happy to see um, what, you, what you're able to make use of, and if there's any feature requests, we are always happy to work on that. All right. Um, Going back to this, in addition to this, we also have uh, AWS Observability Workshop. This is a uh, full-fledged hands-on workshop. This is not only open source. This is also this also talks about CloudWatch, our APM features, uh, all our open source features, even some of the newest you know functionalities that we launched in Grafana like a couple of days ago, like being able to talk to uh, private endpoints inside uh, a VPC, or visualizing alerts in, um, in Grafana that originate from managed Prometheus service and all of that. All of that is available for you to play around with, a uh, hands-on experience for you. Uh, it is a self-guided workshop, but if you have your account teams, you can reach out to them. They will help you organize a uh, AWS organized workshop as well. And there are actually a couple of uh, hands-on sessions uh, that if you are able to get into, you can actually play around with this, uh, with the Observability workshop and uh, in a sub couple of builder sessions and so on as well. So uh, that's starting Actually, today. There's one today, and then uh, there's a bunch of them in the next, uh, next few days. Um, if you want to uh, talk to us uh, or more about this, you can visit us at the, um, at the booth, at the observability booth in the expo, and we're happy to talk to you. And uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you so much.
That's our uh, reach, reach, out, reach out to us on LinkedIn or anywhere that, you're, uh, that you want to talk to. We're happy to always engage with you. And please feel free to uh, give your five-star reviews on the, on the app. So thank you. <laughs>